I think we have everybody. Thanks for joining us. Um, we will start with an opening statement from head coach Joe McEwen and then go into questions. As always, if you have a question, uh, you can direct message Athletic Communications and we'll add you to the queue to ask coach a question. Coach, go ahead. Yeah, thanks everybody. And um, wish everybody a, a, just a safe and happy holiday season you know, as we uh, go through this crazy year. And uh, hope everybody, if you're traveling, that, uh, that you're safe. You know, when you get back, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll make our free throws. So, uh, but we have a great team. We're 4-0. If you told me that, um, you know, before our first game, that we go into the break here uh, undefeated and, you know, 2-0 in the conference, uh, I would tell you, man, I, that would be awesome. So that's kind of where we're at. You know, we're a little sloppy today. The game got a little, little ragged. Uh, but, you know, we're, we've done some great things so far. And, uh, you know, really proud of this team. First question, Noah Kaufman. Coach, you guys uh, broke out a three quarters court press today for most of that first half that uh, uh, looked a little bit different than, than similar presses that you guys have gone to in the past. And obviously, you guys were able to force a ton of turnovers, 20 in the first half alone. Um, can you talk about that press and that pressure and what you guys were able to get from it? Well, I think, you know, again, uh, for us this year, you know, we're a little bit, a little different team. So we've changed some of our, you know, some of our defensive schemes. And, but, uh, but I think we have to be able to press and control the clock and turn people over. Um, and we have the quickness to do that. And, and the other thing that I think you have to have in that is people with great basketball IQs and, you know, you know, Sydney and Veronica, Jordan, Lindsay, they, they read. And that's what happens when you're in those type presses. It's reading the next pass, reading what's going to happen, uh, two passes from there. And, you know, that's where I think those guys are really good. Next question, Drew Schott. Hey, Coach, congrats on the win. Oh, thanks. Um, during the media timeout with halfway through the second quarter, your team was shooting one for 14 on your last 15 shots over eight during that streak. Did you tell anything to your team during that timeout? And cause then they came out on a tear, they scored 12 points uh, and a half and then you guys won by 30. Yeah, no, we just, uh, I, you know, it was just one of those days the ball wouldn't go in. We we're missing free throws that we make layups, wide open threes. So, you know, we just said, keep playing, keep shooting. I mean, you know, I knew those things would, would start to even themselves out, but, you know, we're a great, we're, I shouldn't say great, we haven't proved it yet. Uh, in practice, we're a great three-point shooting team. You know, we're an 80% free throw team. Um, you, know, you know, we did not show, to, show off those, uh, those skills today, but we will. Next question, Eric Rinson labelle Hey, Coach, you mentioned the, uh, the three-point struggles. What is it specifically that you're seeing that you think is limiting your team's success in that department? Uh, well, you know, I, I think one thing, number one, it's, it's, uh, it's a byproduct of our transition game. So, you know, sometimes we're kicking it out. Maybe we're shooting a little quick. Uh, but we, like I said, we're streaky. Uh, I wouldn't leave Veronica Burton open, Jordan Hamilton, Lindsey Pulliam, if I were the other team. And we have a couple more, too. But I think those things over the course of the year weave themselves out. Um, you know, we, we want them to shoot. We want to be able to stretch the floor. And... Uh, you know, use that as a weapon. So we'll get better. I, I, I have a lot of confidence in our, in our uh, three ball. Next question, Noah. Coach, uh, in the first three games, so much of the offense uh, was predicated on Veronica Burton driving uh, and either finishing or dishing uh, at the rim. And, and EKU, they came out in a zone that seemed sort of specifically designed to counter the that driving opportunity for both her and Sydney Wood, who's also done obviously a lot of that. And, you know, down down the stretch of the game, they were able to get into the paint the way they have in those first three games. But when teams try to take away the drive for Burton and Wood, which is where a lot of points have come from in the early going, but w what do you guys turn to at that point offensively uh, w when teams try to take that away? Sorry. Yeah, I think no, number one, you know, I had one of the great scorers in college basketball in Lindsey Pulliam. So, uh, you know, Nothing would surprise me if she came out and averaged 30 points a game in the next five games. It, it would not surprise me either. So, yeah, I feel like we got weapons. We, uh, Courtney got hurt a little bit. She had been playing great around the basket, 
and running the floor um, and being being able to play off of some of you know Veronica, Sydney, Jordan's uh, ability to penetrate and kick to around the basket. So you know we'll you know, I'm, I'm really proud of of, uh, of where Courtney Shaw is too over the last four games and. You know, today she didn't get a lot of good looks. She got hurt a little bit, but she'll, she'll be fine. Um, so I, I think we have enough weapons, you know. And, and, and again, you got to play through that where teams are going to try to take, uh, you know, Veronica out, Lindsay out. Uh, Purdue came out on a triangle and two to start the game, you know, Thursday night. So, you know, we just have, you know, we, we got to be prepared for those things in the Big Ten. Next question, Drew. Hey, Coach, converting those 33 turnovers, uh, Eastern Kentucky turned over 33 times. Uh, Northwestern scored 40, 41 points off those. How important was that the, uh, to your team today? And kind of how often have you prioritized, especially this season, kind of using those turnovers, turning them into points to get victories like this? Sure. Uh, great question, because that's, you know, it's kind of what we have to do, I think, you know, to be in contention to win a Big Ten title again is, you know, we've got to play 90 feet. We've got to turn people over. We've got to run. Um, and, you know, the one thing, we did that at Purdue, too, did a great job. Same thing with Minnesota. So, you know, we got to continue to do those things. And we got to convert, too. You know, when, when you get, a, when you get a, a little momentum, you kick it out after a steal. You know, you got a wide open look. Um, you, you know, that's, that, that kind of takes anything uh, the other team was coming at you with away. So, you know, we got to understand those momentum swings and make people pay. So, and we're getting better at it. Next question, Eric. Coach, I know you mentioned, uh, I think a week or so ago, that uh, the players are going to be going home for Christmas. Um, how are you guys approaching that so when they come back, there's really no issues COVID-wise and you can get right into the Nebraska game? Yeah, you know, I won't, you know we have protocols in, in place here at Northwestern in, in our department. And so I think our players are, uh, you know, I think we're, they're excited about the opportunity to go home and, also know what they have to do to stay safe and, uh, you know, when they come back to, you know, be ready to play. So you know, I feel like uh, it's a well-earned, well-earned break and, you know, they deserve it. Time for a few more questions. Noah. Coach, coming out of that, that Christmas break, you guys got games coming up against Michigan and Nebraska, uh, Nebraska first and then Michigan. Uh, and, I, and when I look at those two teams, I see a couple of players in Kate Kane and Nas Hillman who uh, are are more experienced bigs than any that you've, more experienced, more skilled bigs probably than any of you guys have faced, especially Hillman uh, so far this season. And obviously this team a lot smaller than it was last year. Um, how much of an emphasis are you are you going to place going into these two games on? Okay, now that now is a test for us on the defensive glass in the post defensively uh, against against those two players coming up. Yeah, listen, I, you're exactly right. We have to, and you know, you can't you can't go more than you can't flip one to the other. You know, the Nebraska game on the road uh, be a great challenge for us. We've had tough games there, uh, and we had a really tough game with them last year. Lindsey hit a shot. You know, in the last 30 seconds, maybe. So, you know, expect a dogfight now the rest of the season, not just, you know, the next two games. But, yeah, you know, I think Kane uh, presents problems, you know, for everybody. I think she probably, and don't quote me, uh, you know, led the Big Ten in block shots last year. Maybe as Nebraska is one of their all-time leaders in that area. They, and uh, and she's really good at it. Like, it's, it's, a, it's a skill she doesn't... Uh, you know, get out of position and we're going to have to deal with that. And, uh, you know, Nas is, uh, you know, obviously one of the best players in the league, but Nebraska uh, on the road, yeah, that's really the number one priority right now. And, uh, well, you know, we'll have to, you know, make sure we were able to get out and run and shoot the ball with a lot of confidence. Next question, Drew. Hey, Coach, uh, linking back to those Nebraska and Michigan games, you just mentioned Lindsey's game where it was a huge come from behind victory. And then your games against Michigan last year, there were three. Both of the games in the regular season were close. I think they won by combined 14 points and then obviously the loss in the Big Ten quarterfinals. How do you feel your team are approaching, especially those two games against Big Ten opponents that you've had some struggles with in the past and you've ecked out close victories against? Yeah, I think they're excited. You know, everybody's excited to play now. I think you get into... You know, it's our last non-conference game today. Uh, good for us in that we've already played two Big Ten games. 
uh, and, you know, had a tough place to win at Purdue and, you know, playing Minnesota at home. So I think, you know, I think every game between now and March, if we can get them all in, hopefully uh, they're all going to be dog fights. I think we have, uh, I think we're ranked 15th in the country right now. I think six or seven big 10 teams are ranked most of any conference uh, nationwide. So every game is going to be crazy. It's going to be a fight. And, you know, we just got to focus on us, do the things that we do well, you know, try to make other teams have to adjust us. So, uh, you know, I mean, you can't, you look, you look uh, at every game the rest of the season and it's, you know, it's like murderers row. So, you know, you just got to be ready for, you know, and I think we will be. I think our players, this group now with seniors and upperclassmen, you know, they've grinded through the Big Ten the last couple of years. They paid their dues, you know, when they were freshmen too. And they learned how to win on the road in, in this league, which is a, an acquired skill. It's not an easy thing. So, you know, we'll, you know, we'll just kind of take them as they come, but really focus on us. Last question for John Volk. Yeah, hi, Coach. We saw... Um... Softball coaches Kate and Carol Drohan helping out along the baseline today. Awesome. I just wanted to ask if they've gotten a chance to talk with your team and the kind of help you've gotten and your team's gotten from from everybody at the athletic department. Yeah, you know, that, uh, they're awesome. The Drohans and, you know, Tracy Fuchs was, you know, working the game the other night. And uh, so they've, you know, they, they re we had such great crowds last year and people – I think just really enjoy watching our team play. So our, our players feel that it's just been a, you know, it's just been a difficult thing for not just us, but everybody uh, with no fans. And yes, you know, really uh, everything's crazy, but you know, Dr. Phillips uh, came in and talked to them this week and got a chance to spend some time with them. And, you know, they understand how much he cares about them too. So, you know, they, 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 they've, Morty's always been a fixture to our games and, uh, so I think they 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 feel the uh, that you know they feel that everybody in our department universities behind them. Awesome, thanks, Coach. Guys, thanks so much. Uh, be safe, right? And look forward to uh, to seeing y'all soon. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. <laughs>